Praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the evening. Praise Him when you're smiling, praise Him when you're breaking. Praise Him in the sun and praise Him in the starlight. Praise Him every season, praise Him through the dark times. Celebrate, celebrate, shout it from the mountain tops. Celebrate, celebrate, even with a broken heart. Till dawn awakes, we'll sing your praise, dancing in the dark. For all our days, our song will say, Lord, how great you are. Praise Him with your hands and praise Him with your face down. Praise Him with the trumpet, praise Him with a loud sound. Heaven is a party, join the celebration. Come on everybody, time to start dancing. Celebrate, celebrate. Shout it from the mountain tops. Celebrate, celebrate, even with a broken heart. Till dawn awakes, we'll sing your praise, dancing in the dark. For all our days, our song will say, Lord, how great you are. Sing it out loud, sing it out strong. 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 Celebrate, celebrate, shout it from the mountain tops. Celebrate, celebrate, even with a broken heart. Till dawn awakes, we'll sing your praise, dancing in the dark. For all our days, our song would say, Lord, how great you are. All right. So at all times, we praise the name of the God who has saved us and the God who leads us and guides us. Okay, let's sing one more song. Uh, okay, let me see. Where is that? Oops, sorry. All right, we've been studying about this triune God, you know, the God who is one in three and three in one. And uh, uh, last week, you know, somebody was asking me a doubt on that. And I was saying, I still cannot wrap my head around that, this fact. And that's that itself shows that he's, he is inexplainable. You know, you can't explain this concept of Trinity. And uh, no matter how much we try to simplify it and how much we try to explain it away, the Bible keeps on saying that God is triune in nature. So let's sing this. He will be raised up, lifted up, highly exalted, raised up, lifted up, highly exalted, raised up, lifted up. Highly exalted Jesus, Jesus my Lord. He will be raised up, lifted up, highly exalted. Raised up, lifted up, 
highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted jesus jesus my lord we raising the father this day of life we are lifting the father with our souls and our mind exalting the father all the glory deserves in the father with our lives we will serve he will be raised up lifted up highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted jesus jesus my lord we are reaching the savior messiah and king we are lifting the savior and his praises we sing exalting the savior to his throne up on high we praise the savior till we meet him in the sky he will be raised up lifted up highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted jesus Jesus my lord we are raising the spirit blessed comforter divine we are raising the spirit holy tender and kind exalting the spirit as he lives in our hearts we are praising the spirit and he never will depart he will be raised up lifted up Highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted raised up lifted up highly exalted Jesus Jesus my lord Jesus Jesus my lord Jesus Jesus my lord All right so let's worship this triune god today as we start this evening heavenly father as we draw closer to you we understand that there is so much for us yet to know you we try to study the word of god that reveals you to us but we know that all human words expressions parables all these fall short of who you actually are and even john who walked with you and spoke with you and ate with you for all those years he when he saw you again he had to fall prostrate at his at your feet and worship you because you are so much more so much more than what we know and as we come to you this evening oh lord help us to understand that what we know is only as we see in a mirror and we're going to see the real jesus we're going to see him face to face and that then we will know as we ought to know and we will be known as we actually are all this mystery with our human brain we cannot fathom but help us oh lord to learn from your word and to understand what we can the truth that we need to apply in our lives truth that needs to correct us discipline us help us to humble ourselves before your word this evening In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right, so welcome back. Let me just Okay, so we have been doing a series on on god and we have reached god's will okay that's where we are right now and last week uh, the last last meeting that we had we we're talking about god's will and man's free will okay now th- today i'm going to actually speak on um you know whether man really is free or not are we really free to make our own choices does god really give us the freedom of choosing freely you know choosing as we like 
or does god control the strings and uh, some people talk about the original sin you know which is the first sin or the original sin and people talk about the devil people talk about adam and eve say okay that is the original sin and then they say no before adam and eve sinned the devil sinned so who who caused the devil to sin did devil have free will uh, and uh, you know uh, who caused him to sin all those questions okay so we're going to try to answer all these things today and uh, basically i want to start from this one verse which comes in uh, first chronicles chapter 29 okay old testament first chronicles chapter 29 and verses 11 and 12 first chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11 and 12 okay this is the last chapter right it says here uh chapter 29 verses 11 and 12 yours o lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours yours is the kingdom o lord and you are exalted as head above all both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all in your hand are power and might and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all okay and then finally he says in verse 13 and now we thank you our god and praise your glorious name okay now if you look at this two verses we understand what we mean by this term sovereign god okay sovereign god the word sovereign is not there in the bible okay but we claim that god is sovereign what does it mean when it says that god is sovereign like the queen of england is the sovereign okay so what does it mean it means that she rules england okay but the just because the word sovereign means that he is the ruler and is in control and all honor all authority all power belongs to that person does not mean that the queen dictates everything that happens in england okay or in uk she decides whatever happens everywhere in every corner of uk that doesn't that's not what the word sovereign actually means that's not how the bible also uses that understanding of the word sovereign right so this is what sovereign means right power and glory and victory and majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours yours is the kingdom o lord you are exalted as head above all both riches honor come from you and you rule over all and in your hand are power and might and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all now a sovereign is the person who is in charge who is in control sovereign owns everything sovereign is not accountable to any of his creatures sovereign holds himself accountable to everything that he has put down as laws okay so which means the laws that he commands he is he's not above the law he is he also obeys all that you know it is part of his um, what do you call it sovereignty that god ordains all these things so is he sovereign yes god rules over everything that's what these verses say no god rules over everything and that's what makes him the sovereign but you know uh, i used to play these um, uh, management games long back you know on computer we used to have this management still they have uh, it's like um, say age of empires and things like that now age of empires is a game where you play with a group of people first you first get a group of farmers and you start harvesting planting you know plants and cutting wood and all that and then after some time you know you start uh, recruiting soldiers and these farmers will continue to keep on collecting resources and these soldiers will go and collect uh, and anyway, soldiers will start guarding the place and then you know the whole map is actually dark okay so as you keep on uh, exploring the darkness the cloud that is around the game area keeps receding you know and slowly you start advancing and you find out okay there is another enemy somewhere close by and he is also advancing so there it's actually a race against that person so your civilization should become very powerful your soldiers should get, become very strong and then slowly you should attack that place and conquer the whole map that is the idea of these games okay now what happens in these games is that the people that are under you 
you micromanage okay you manage what one person does you manage what the soldier does you manage which place the soldier will guard you manage how many uh, people can be accommodated in each house you know everything is managed micromanaged by the player if i am the player i'll be ma- micromanaging every individual on my game piece you know on the so is god like that now e- even in this game the enemy is not under me you know it's uh, the computer is controlling the enemy so is as i am building my market and as i am building my uh, my ship and all those suddenly you know these guys will come and attack me and i will lose my soldiers i will lose some farms you know I, and i have to fight back so th- those are unpredictable things the computer decides those things okay now in our situation does god manage both sides like uh, you know the enemy as well as us does god micromanage the whole thing so it's like you know um, one of my friends used to have these small toy soldiers and used to play with that hundreds of toy soldiers so what happens is that you know you control the allies and you control the uh, the axis you know the the people who are fighting against the allies so uh, both the teams are controlled by the same person so the enemy keeps on advancing and he will make sure that you know his soldiers his favorite soldiers will shoot down those enemies okay and one group will win based on what the game master decides okay i decide whether x or y is going to win right so uh, i i will make sure okay today x is going to win so i'll make all the soldiers of x trample down the y's tomorrow i'll again set the pieces back and then i'll say okay y is going to win huh? and the y will advance against the x so i'm controlling both it's like a chess board you know both sides are being played by the same god then there is something wrong with it right so that means god already knows the outcome so he must be controlling the opposite party also need not be that is where there is a difference you know when god does not micromanage everything yes he is in control he can but he does not that is the beauty of our god he is so mighty that he can let go of man to take decisions by himself but still make sure that his plans are being done okay his plans are executed that is the amazing quality that our god has okay like for example if i i want uh, you know jesus to come to the earth and i want you know being god i want jesus to be born uh, in the earth and i want jesus to grow up to a young age and then i want jesus to be baptized and then go into ministry and all that now devil tries again and again to hinder this plan when moses was there he tried to get rid of all the israelite boys you know he tried to massacre all the israel jewish boys and so moses would not be born and the nation would not be born you see but then god so happened that moses was born and moses was raised in pharaoh's pa- palace and pharaoh looked after his enemy you know god made him rise up there and then he taught him everything that pharaoh knows and he made him a qualified leader and then god made him a shepherd and trained him for 40 years in the wilderness then brought the same moses back and led these people out of bondage into the promised land so this is moses again we find that during jesus time again the slaughter of innocents happened no a lot of babies are killed and satan tries to kill off jesus but in spite of that god makes his plan come through and jesus is safe throughout that time his father joseph it's a dream and that warning he he obeys it immediately takes the child and flees to egypt and keeps the baby and mother safe so we see that god will accomplish his plan no matter how great the opposition chess player is but he doesn't micromanage the opposition chess player okay so if he controls both sides then that is cheating you know we would say that is cheating why because you know what is the outcome and you're playing it you know just like rehearsing uh, a drama you know you you it's all pre planned it's all pre programmed so we call such a thing you know a fixed match god is not playing fixed matches here you know but nothing catches god by surprise okay a, a, a sudden move by the enemy will not catch god by surprise because he knows how to counter that you know so that is how powerful our god is so when somebody says that god controls both sides that is a lie god does not do that god does not control satan to such an extent that he makes satan do all the wicked things and then he says okay satan it's you who are doing all these things uh, then satan would turn back and tell god but 
you are the one who's pulling the strings i'm just a puppet in your hands then god would be the one who caused all this we get things see so that's why you know uh, i was looking at uh, one scientist you know giving an interview on youtube and he said um, i don't believe that god exists because of two reasons he said because of two reasons and he said the first thing is that um, god they say is all powerful but he can't stop the natural calamities from happening he can't stop the tsunami he can't stop uh, you know diseases he can't stop death um the genocide all these things he can't stop so god does not exist and second reason he said was um uh, if god is all good then why does he allow this evil to exist in this world you know so these are two questions that convinced him that god does not exist now god does not say that you know evil does not exist but then how did evil come to be or how how was the origin of evil did god initiate this evil or did it come uh, you know otherwise so we say that okay if god is the uh, you know source of all things then evil also should have come from god no if god is the uh, creator of all things then evil also should have come from god but the bible says god is whatever god created he said it is good it is good it is good turn with me to genesis chapter 1 genesis chapter 1 and verse 4 and god saw that the light was good and god separated the light from the darkness genesis chapter 1 verse 10 god called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and god saw that it was good again in verse 12 um the earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seed according to their own kinds and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed each according to the kind of god saw that it was good repeatedly chapter 1 uh, verse 4 10 12 18 21 25 25 god keeps on saying all that he created is good is good is good and finally in verse 31 after creating man he goes one step forward one step higher he says and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good it was very good okay so he did not create evil he did not create Uh, you know murder he did not create lying he did not create temptation nothing like that okay he created all things and all things were good solomon one of the wisest men of old he wrote in his book ecclesiastes turn with me to the book of ecclesiastes wonderful book by the way one of the least read books of the bible okay but i would encourage you to read it the book of ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29 Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29 says like see this alone i found that god made man upright but they have sought out many schemes see so when man was created he was created perfect he was created very good he was created upright the bible says so there was no wickedness inside of man you know there was no sin nature inside of man then where did man get this temptation of course it came from outside you know so if god created man like that perfect and sinless then who made the devil what about devil you know now the beauty is the bible says god did not create the devil god never created the devil god created a beautiful angel called lucifer and lucifer his purpose was to lead in the worship he was beautiful he was one of the archangels he was very powerful so he was like a ruler you know up in heaven he was a ruler he was a leader among the among a group of angels so he was just like gabriel and he was like mikhail a, a angel of authority and beauty and all those talents that god has given him now how did this beautiful creature you know uh, become evil let's see if he was evil in the first place okay first timothy chapter 4 and verse 4 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 4 for everything created by god is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving so everything created by god is good 
So God did not create a wicked creature called Satan. No. He created a beautiful creature called Lucifer. And he gave him authority, power, talents, all these things. And his purpose was to glorify God. But this creature also was given free will. Just like how humans have been given free will, he was also given free will. And see, that is where the problem starts. Because God is loving, he, he doesn't want to control everything like a puppet master. He gives his creatures free will. But the potential to sin is already there inside this free will. No? That creature can choose for itself something other than what God has planned for that creature. Okay? That is the potential for evil. So whenever God gives this absolute freedom or God gives this free will to that creature, inside that free will, the potential to sin is already there. No? And that is what can be misused. So this is what you ought to do, but you can choose to do it or not. That or not is what has got the potential to lead you to sin. See, So if the angel called Lucifer is created to worship, he can choose to worship or he can choose not to worship. And that is where the potential to sin comes. So he wanted to rule, he wanted to replace God, he wanted to be God himself. And that very thought, where did it occur? It occurred in his heart. Because the potential for sin was already there because he had free will. See, And the same thing has been passed on to man also. Because God is loving, he does not control us, micromanage us, he has given us free will. We see that in Genesis chapter 2. Uh, as, he, as God puts him inside the Garden of Eden, verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may, uh, King James Version says, freely. Uh, in my Bible it says, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. See, So he could choose from whichever tree he wanted, he could eat anything. See? That is free will. God says, in this garden, you have free will. You can choose what you want to eat and what you don't want to eat. But my commandment is that that tree is off limits. Don't eat it. Because if you eat of that, you will die. But can man eat of it? Yes. Man can eat it. Man should not eat it. But man has the potential to break that commandment. You see? And that is where the, the evil comes in. You know? The potential for evil is there. Potential for sin is there. And God gave us that potential. Why? So that we can use it wisely. And we can we can never blame God that, you know, God is a dictator or God controls us so that we will not be able to sin. You see? So, like the government. You know, when the government is giving us license for our vehicles, the government expects us to use that license responsibly. The license, just because I have a driver's license does not mean that I can break the speed limit, does not mean that I can go and hit people. It just means that I have to use my vehicle responsibly. If I see the speed limit, I have to stick to that. If I see a red light, I have to stop for it. Otherwise, they will they will ask me this question, show me your license. And then when they take the license, they will stamp on it, you are unfit for driving. Why? Because you did not obey the rule of the land, you see. Same way, the potential for uh, you know using it irresponsibly is there. But God does not withhold that freedom from us. Because he's loving, he gives you and me that freedom. And he says, you can break the law, but the consequence you have to face it. You will surely die. But his command is that, don't do it. Don't cut the red line. Don't you know uh, over speed. And then he gives us the license for that. See? So the license is for us to use it deliberate uh, responsibility and so, so what is responsibility you know i, I like the spider-man quote which says uncle ben says you no know, with great power comes great responsibility see so god also gave us this great power of free will i can choose whatever i want in that garden see i can choose to eat any tree i can also choose to eat this tree if i have to but god has commanded me not to but inside this great power god gave him the responsibility now what is the response the ability to respond is what responsibility is okay the ability to respond does the creature have the ability to respond yes he can respond positively to god and he can 
behave negatively also to god you know the potential to respond incorrectly or irresponsibly is also there in that see so that is where responsibility is of very much of importance you know i have the responsibility to choose correctly i have the responsibility because i have been given you know god has entrusted me with this see it's like my parents you know uh, when they when they leave uh, the house uh, you know for uh, going for a prayer meeting long back okay when my dad and mom used to leave uh, me and my sister alone at home and they will go uh, for the prayer meeting and all that they are entrusting the whole house into our hands nammal varayathile kallande kaiyile taakkuvel elpikkunna pole okay they they are entrusting me and my sister the whole house and they are hoping that when they come back the house will be standing you know we will not misuse the freedom that's what they they hope and they go and then we call up all our friends and say okay party time man guys come my house is free and all the people come and you know when they come back and they see party is going on next time they will not do that they will not give us the freedom why because the opportunity we had to prove ourselves we failed in that responsibility we failed to keep that trust you see so that is why you know uh, when god saw that they had committed sin we say oh but that's such a small sin no that was the test whether you can be trusted or not whether you can you have the responsibility or not because they failed there you know that's uh, we think okay if i was there i would have uh, chosen the right thing no if we were there we would have chosen just like adam, adam was just our representative and he did everything exactly as you and i would do in the same situation so adam was tempted and he sinned we were also we would also do the same thing if we were in that situation so did the devil make adam do it no adam did it by himself adam chose to sin nobody can make anybody do anything you know i cannot uh, you know i i can force you to do it by by using you know excessive force i can threaten you and you know poke a knife or a gun in your head and make you do it but that is not being done willfully i didn't do it willfully you, you know it's like forced from outside but the devil never forced adam to sin devil never compelled adam to sin devil just you know that also temptation also he he tempted only eve he did not even tempt adam so adam willfully sinned now whenever we say i did something then the responsibility is mine the blame is mine so god never forced the devil to tempt man so the responsibility is not god's that is the devil's devil never made the man commit the sin so the responsibility is the man's it's not the devil's but when god confronts them first thing that adam says is that the woman that you gave me you know, that's what that's how he answers uh verse 12 chapter 3 genesis chapter 3 verse 12 the man said the woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me fruit of the tree and i ate God commanded Adam directly he said you should not eat of that tree he has no one else to blame but himself but he blames the woman and what does he say not he is not blaming the woman he is blaming god who gave the woman you know the woman whom you gave to me and then the woman turns around and says oh the, the serpent then the lord said to the woman what is it that you have done the woman said the serpent deceived me and i ate see so we always find somebody to blame you know and that's that's the that's why that's how we avoid responsibility is i don't want to take the responsibility for this sin i sinned because of her and she says i sinned because of this creature serpent and god says no it is your responsibility because i gave you the freedom i gave you the command and you both are responsible for that and because of that mankind is cursed women are cursed the ground is cursed serpent also is cursed you see it was my responsibility it is our responsibility so the responsibility has to be purely on our heads why because the freedom was given to us the choice was given to us love was shown towards us trust was given to us so all these reasons make us accountable for our actions so nobody forced me you know i've seen so many young people say the devil made me do it or you know circumstances made me do it no no one can force you to do it no one can you know put you on a gun point and make you do it that means you did not do it willfully okay but if you did it it is your responsibility it is my own responsibility and that's why god says if a person goes to hell it is by choice 
God has not forced anybody to go to hell. If a person goes to hell, it is his choice to rebel against God, to say no to the great salvation that God has procured for the whole world. Because Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he died for the sins of the whole world. He did not die for a few people. He did not die for one or two per persons. He died for the whole world. Let me let me show you that uh, you know that Jesus did uh, die for the whole world, right? Um, I think it is um, one John. Yeah. Uh, 1 John, um, I think it is, chapter 2, yeah, uh, my little children, I'm reading from verse 1, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, The world that is used here is all the people from every race, tribe, language. You know, It is everyone. Jesus' blood was the propitiation for the whole world. What does it mean? It means that it has the capacity to save everyone who believes. Anyone who puts his trust in Jesus can be saved. That's how God made the provision. See? Which means the heaven's door is open from the time Jesus entered it with his blood. Heaven's door has been laid open. Now if anybody wants to go to hell, that person by choice only will go to hell. See, So can God save everyone? Yes, the capacity for saving everyone is there in Jesus' blood. You know? But will the whole world be saved? No, everyone will not be saved. Why? Because people will reject this offer. No matter how good it sounds, no matter how easy it is, no matter how simple it is, people will still reject this offer because they want to rebel against it. They don't want to do what God wants them to do. See, That's what uh, Paul also says. I do what, what I don't want to do. The sin that is in me, I, I keep on doing the sins again and again. Why? Because that's how I'm wired. That's what that's what I'm like. You know, That's what I like. So I do keep doing the same thing. So because I don't want to change, because I don't want to repent, because I don't want to come and submit myself to the Lord, I will rebel against Him. Even not making a decision is rebellion. Hmm. Not coming under His kingdom, His law is rebellion. Because we saw that all things belong to Him. And if I don't surrender my kingdom, I am the ruler of my kingdom, if I don't surrender my kingdom to God, then I am saying, Lord, I will keep on ruling my own kingdom. You rule your own kingdom. And Jesus says, no, that's not possible. One king has to surrender for the other to take over. If you want to be in God's kingdom, then you have to surrender your kingdom at his feet. Lay down your power, your will, everything at his feet and say, Lord, take control, take charge of my life. I want to be part of your eternal kingdom. That's what the thief, on the, the robber on the cross said, you know. Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He was acknowledging that Jesus has a kingdom. He's a king. And he was surrendering his kingdom the one that he was ruling all this time. The, his ruling of his own kingdom led him to the cross and he's dying there. And in his last breath, he surrenders his kingdom to this new king and says, you take over my kingdom. And Jesus said, not that day, not someday, today, you're going to be with me. Okay. So that's, that's how the Lord saves. Even on the cross, he was not helpless. He was saving. He was saving sinners. Even on the cross. So, he can do it today for us also, you know. So he's not he's sovereign, he's almighty, he's powerful. Ultimately, his plan is fulfilled. Whether man supports it or goes against it, he doesn't care. He can always outsmart you. He can always play better chess than you. He doesn't have to play both sides. He will play one side, but he will still win no matter what move you make. It will not surprise him. So that's how great a chess player my God is. That's how powerful God is. He is sovereign and his plans will come to pass whether I support it or not. And the other side, it is God has given me commands and he has given me responsibility. 
I am responsible for every sinful decision that I take. And I'm also responsible for all the, all the right decisions that I take. But he has given me this beautiful, beautiful uh, you know, uh, gift called free will. And I have to use it responsibly. I can use it for my good. I can also use it for my bad. I can use it for other people's good. I can also use it for other people's bad. But God holds me accountable for every sin that I commit. So some people say that it's a great mystery. I don't see the mystery in that. I see this as a wonderful way in which God has you know, uh, his, revealed his love to us. So we are both responsible. At the same time, God is in control of all the events of history. Right. So four thing, five things I want to close with. Firstly, earthly rulers are all under his control. Secondly, human events are all under God's control. Okay. Earthly rulers are under God's control. Human events are under God's control. The good angels are under God's control. The evil angels are also under God's control. You see that in, in the book of Job, you know, when all the angels came to uh, report to God, Satan also was there. So which means even Satan is under God's control. He can't do anything without God's permission. Even human decisions are in God, under God's control. But he has given us the free will to choose wisely. Okay, So that's where the responsibility part comes in. So earthly rulers, human events, good angels, evil angels, Satan, human decisions, everything is under God's control. But he has given us this free will inside which I can exercise my choice. And in that, God wants to be glorified. In that choice that I take, God wants to be glorified. You know? And that's the beauty of a person being led to worship. So worship is choosing to surrender ourselves at the feet, prostrate, falling prostrate before God and surrendering all that I am to all that he is. That is true worship. So, God who cannot make an evil thing, but only can make good things. God who can only make perfect things. This God is the one whom we surrender to. And he will make our imperfect lives perfect. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you because you are a God who is good and a God who is perfect. In spite of all the wickedness that man does, you are still in control and you are still seated on the throne. Your plans are still fulfilled, accomplished. Your will, nobody can thwart it, nobody can bypass it. You accomplish your purposes. You lead the good and you also speak to the wicked. You guide the strong and you also help the weak. But our God is so sovereign that nothing is beyond his control. I can always trust him for every decision that he takes. Help us, O oh Lord, to surrender all that we are at the feet of the one who is in control, who is sovereign. And let his will be done in our lives, just as Jesus prayed, that your will be done in our lives, O oh Father. Let our imperfect will become responsible. Let it be accountable, O oh Lord, for all the wrong things that we speak and do and think. Help us, O oh Lord, to surrender all that we will at your feet, O oh Master. And say, let your will be done in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.